Awesome. So we're going to be reaching towards the end of the second section of uh, the Dark Programming Tutorial Series. Towards this end of the section, we're going to be looking at the most important concept of generics. So what exactly are generics in Dart and how useful are they in writing a very complete program and also making it very easy for developers to also understand about uh, making writing less code also is going to be part of this today's video. I've got some slides to show you again as well. I'm going to take you through that, show you some programming codes. And at the end of this video, come back, come back and summarize it for you in one place and uh, end this video. So why wait? Let's begin. Awesome. So what exactly are generics? These are just simple ways of creating and reducing or uh, rewriting unnecessary code. So what exactly am I telling you here? Let us assume that we have a simple way of writing a list of integers. Uh, there could be another method that would require writing a list of string values. Similarly, there could be another method where it was going to require a list of double values. Technically, what is going to change? Just the type of the variable that is going to be accepted inside the list. So we would write list of integer, list of string, list of, say, for example, list of double values, which is just unnecessary code, right? We are writing three different methods to do just one set of action. So in order to reduce that, they came up with the concept of generics, which is very famous in Java. So that's been derived as part of the Dart as well. And we're going to be talking about that in this video. So when you see the notation that I've put here, the open and close angular brackets, when you see the notation that I've put here, open and close angular brackets, that means that it, it is going to be accepting some form of type. And in the type here, you could just give a single letter called as T. Now, the next question is, what does the T mean here? So in, uh, in Dart, we're going to be representing a generic type using the T. There are different letters that are also accepted, like the single characters like E, T, S, K, and V. You could use any of this and the Dart will automatically understand that you're trying to represent a generic there. When you actually put it as part of the angular brackets, that definitely means that we are representing a generic and we are very much good to go with the concept. What exactly are we going to do with the generic method? So how do you create a generic method and what are you going to do with it? Awesome. So this is going to be our program here and I've written a simple class. So as you can see, uh, the Dart's generic concept is primarily going to be supported or done most importantly, most importantly inside of an abstract classes. So abstract classes are going to be most useful because uh, let's say for example that you have a list of items that you want to uh, represent in d three different classes where one is going to accept an integer, one is going to accept a float and one more is going to accept a string. You could create a simple generic abstract class and use that to be as uh, implemented or you could inherit that across all the three different classes and you've reduced the uh, writing complexity of code as well. Now this is written a simple simple class here which is going to accept a generic data as you can see i've written a t of get response i could still remove this which is unnecessary at this point of time so this is a simple class and the class has got a method called as get response that get response now has a ha, it, it could it could return any type it want and it could take any type it want as the key this is going to be called as the generic method so this is the method that i, that I was talking to you guys about right over here so when you create a generic method you are saying that you could accept anything you want to accept inside that you could take any type of data you want to and it's going to be taking doing the work for you in the background without you actually writing what type has to be accepted so when you create a generic method like this this is going to be the structure you represent the return type for sure it could be anything it could even be void at this point of time and this is the method name obviously and here you're representing that it's going to be a generic method so make sure you don't throw out any errors and here at this point we are saying that it could take a generic uh, key as its input argument so when you write this method i'm going to create a simple class here for you guys to show how it this works so i'm going to create a simple uh, object here let's call it a var s is equal to close this out and when you do yes dot get response I'm going to pass a value inside this. I'm going to pass a list of values. I mean, how is it going to work? Because it's going to be taking a generic type, right? You could take anything at this point. So when you pass a list of values, it's going to come back obviously and print it for you, which is amazing, right? We didn't actually say a list should be accepted here. We just wrote a simple character called T and it automatically accepted a list of values. Now you could actually even do say a list of a string here. You could say, hello, how are you? you and it will still accept that that's the power of generic because that's how you are actually writing a method you are writing it to accept any value you could you want it to be take it will help you in writing very less code but also increase the scope of the code 
so that's how that's how you could represent uh, uh, generic method in dart so i hope you get understood this point of point here you could do anything here you could pass anything because we're saying that it could take in a generic value right and it's also going to return the key which is unnecessary at this point if you print this it's going to say the same value again but just just for the sake of uh, showing you guys the generic method i wrote this code let's go back to our dart pad and con look at next concept now what if you want to restrict the classes that you want to accept in generic which is obviously right which is uh, say for example you want to say i want you to accept a generic value but restrict it to only simple uh, simple classes that i'm going to give it to you guys so when you when you want to do that you just do a extends keyword on that and say what are the accepted methods that should be or the accepted classes that should be coming under the generic uh, generic character for example here we have t and when you want to say that this class should not accept any other thing other than t right now when you see this 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 is like saying that this is going to accept any object for that but when you want to restrict the object let's say that i want you to say extends only some base class i'm creating here i want you to just accept this alone meaning whatever classes is going to have this as the parent should only be accepted here when you when you restricting it to that scope you could pass here something like say for example i am going to create an object when i am going to restrict the class for example let's say that i want to restrict to only allowable classes in i have i have actually written base class here right but if i in this place i give say new class it's going to throw an error for me if you can see in the right it's going to throw an error saying that you are, you are saying that it's going to extend only base class but you are actually taking a new class it's obviously throwing a compile time error right at the start itself so as you can see it's saying that new class doesn't extend base class so but in the in this place if you say base class it's going to be okay with that because we have controlled the uh, generic as to only be accepted at this point of time this base class could have any method inside that it could have some say for example some method to fetch something for you but it doesn't matter you are restricting restricting the generic to only classes that is going to accept your base class as the parent now if you do extends here this is going to be extending the base class that means that this is going to be a child of base class so child of base base classes is going to be fine so when you say new class it's obviously going to have all the attributes of a base class so when you do this part it's going to allow you to allow you to create a generic so that's how simple way where you can just restrict what are the available classes that you can actually have as part of your generic uh, character t e s k v anything you want to all right so that's it for this video hope this video is informative because generics are very very important concepts and hopefully understood what different types would do and uh, you would understand how to create complex methods and even create complex architectures using simple generics in your code let's go back and summarize and let's end this video out right away awesome so hopefully you guys did learn about the generics generics are very important as well and I, I took you through different concepts here i took you through the generic method i took you through how you can control accessing your generic using your uh, parameterized uh, generic as well so that's it for this video hopefully this video is informative make sure you stay tuned for upcoming videos as well because we're going to end the section two very very soon and we're going to talk talk about some complex stuff in section three as well let me meet you there and then for episode